is today about? Well, circle geometry, but let's look at the exam format for grade 11. So as we look at grade 11, there is a paper one and a paper two. Circle geometry or Euclidean geometry is in paper two, and it's worth approximately 40 out of 150. So about, you know, uh, a third of the marks in, well, maybe even less, like 28% or something like that of the marks in paper two. So that's where the topic is. This is also the layout of the general thing that we want to start revising for. And so what I'm going to attempt to do is talk about this for two weeks um, and do as much revision as I can. Then I'll also do uh, functions from paper one, some revision there, and then also do some revision from trigonometry, which is paper two, because those traditionally are the, the quite heavy sections. Um, and also they're quite, you know, they're worth quite a lot of marks. Now, in the exam revision sessions on the Saturdays, we'll also go over some of these topics, but we'll also look at things like that. Um, we've just done finance growth and decay, so that was recent. Um, so we'll probably focus on that, analytical geometry, uh, and any other you know, questions that students are particularly concerned about. It does, Tato, yes, but it's, you know, there's a lot in circle geometry and there's a lot in trigonometry. And so, um, yeah, but the pure number of topics, yes, there's more in paper one. Give me a thumbs up if, if this feels like it gives you an overview and you understand kind of where we're pointing as we begin this revision. Give me a thumbs down if you're like, oh, what topic is that? I've never seen that before. Um, or if you just feel like you want to ask a question. And it's it mute all there um here. I think maybe there's a bit of cool. So uh let's just talk about circles too. In fact, you know what? The best way to learn about circles is to ask yourself, can you do simple questions with circles? So as we come to circle geometry, there's some basic terminology you need to know. I'm kind of assuming you know this, but if you don't, then let me know in the chat. Something called a tangent, which just touches a circle at one point is important. So you need to know what a tangent is. You need to know what, oh, measurement. You're quite right, Fazama. So measurement would actually, measurement is going to blend in, is going to blend into paper two. But often measurement is mixed into trigonometry. So you're right. Measurement is also, um, and, and measurement is about 10 marks normally. So measurement 10, trig 50. Impos yes, there is. Um, so Impose has asked, are there lessons with about number patterns? So I'll just show you quickly. Um, so if you go, so it's a good question. So here is the website. Click on grade 11. You then click and you get the screen. Then you look through the list of lessons. And if you look all the way down here, you will see lessons on number patterns. And you will also see if you look in this uh, topic over here, measurement. Oh, sorry, there's measurement there. Okay. Okay, let's get back to this. So just some basic vocab. Um, you need to know about tangents. You also need to know uh, what a cyclic quad is. And a cyclic quad is a quadrilateral that is formed with its vertices on the um, circumference. And a cyclic quad can have an exterior angle. So that would be an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. And this one over here would be an interior opposite. And they're going to be equal. And there's some other facts about cyclic quads you need to know about. Another really important theorem that comes up a lot is theorems that deal with the center of a circle. And uh, you need to know what a chord and what an arc is. So uh, an arc is just going to be that thing over there, whereas a chord is that straight line, although it doesn't look that straight, going from here to here. 
Now we talk about the angle that a chord or an arc makes at the center. And we also talk about the angle that a chord or an arc makes at the circumference. So we call this one up here, the angle at the, at the circumference, because it's literally formed at the circumference. And we would call this one over here, the angle at the center. Can everybody, anybody tell me what is the relationship between the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference? Can you remember from earlier in the year? Okay, Fateko and Quimelo have said that the angle at the circumference, so let's say this is 120, sorry, this is the angle at the center. It's going to be double the size of the angle at the circumference. Okay, so that's an important theorem that's going to come up and you're going to see it when we start practicing now. Um, another one that is quite important is if you have an, an arc or a chord between two points and you make one angle at the circumference and then you make another angle at the circumference, you get this shape. And I want to know what is the relationship between the green dots there? What is the relationship between the green dots? So these guys will be equal, right? So if that was 30, that will be 30. And there's actually another set down here. If that will be equal to that, and that is called angles in the same segment, yes. And what they mean by angles in the same segment is that literally, if you imagine these two dots being joined by a chord, or then the one side over here is one segment, and then on the other side is another segment. So it's angles in the same segment. And these angles are subtended by this chord here, or by, you could say, by the arc here. So I'm throwing out quite a lot of words. And I think the best way to get those words is just by doing questions. Um, but that's a little bit of basic, you know, going back in time. But let's have a quick look at a revision question to kind of get us moving. So if I said to you, what is, let's do this one. Find me the value of X, Y, and Z in this question using what you know about circle geometry. So think about what is there, what reason you would need, and see what you can write down. And if you're feeling confused, you must ask a question because I'm assuming most of you have been exposed to this. You probably just don't understand it well yet. And so I'm trying to build a foundation with you today. Yes, Vatejo, I think you're on the right track. X is 100. And the reason is exterior angle cyclic quad. So this one over here is 100. What about Y? So Tati has said Y is 90. I agree with you, Tati. What is the reason going to be? There's something special about a cyclic quad. And in a cyclic quad, the opposite angles make 180. So if this is 90 already, and this is the opposite angle of cyclic quad, we write opposite angles, cyclic quad, and then that must be 90. And then using the same reason, if this is 100, Z must be 80 opposite angles, cyclic quad. You could also say that angles on a straight line add to 180, and that would give you Z as well. Okay, so that is sort of a, a good question just to get the juices flowing in terms of your brain and what uh, kind of remembering the stuff. So let's do another one. If you want to take a screenshot, take a screenshot now. And then I'm going to move on to another question. Okay. So here is another question. 
This one, it says you're given a circle with center O and a chord AB, which is 16 centimeters. So that's down here. And AO is 10 centimeters. So AO is 10. AO is 10. Find OD. So I don't see any cyclic quads. I don't see a tangent, but there is some. There are some theorems that relate to this drawing, and you might um, be able to figure them out. Aha, Fazama, can you explain how you got that? What did you do? Well, maybe put your hand up and you can just tell me through the process you used. Pythag, yes. I agree Pythagoras is your friend, but before you use Pythagoras, what do you need to have in order to use it? How do we know? Yes, you need a right angle. How do we know that this is 90? How do we know that OD is perpendicular to AB? And this theorem, the way it's named, we say the line from center to what? So the line from the center to the midpoint of the chord. The line from center to the midpoint of the chord means this is 90. And because we know it's a right angle now, we can use Pythagoras. So what does that look like? Well, we know in Pythagoras, 10 squared, now remember this is half of 16, so that's going to be 8, because it says it's the midpoint. So 10 squared equals 8 squared plus OD squared. That will be Pythagoras. And then to find what um, OD is, I'm going to have to square root all of this which is the square root of 36, which is 6. And that will be 6. Give me a thumbs up if you followed everything so far. Give me a thumbs down if you're feeling a bit confused or unsure about what we're doing. Okay. Cool. Well, then let's keep crack -a Here is your next question. Oh, do we need to write a reason when we say AD equals BD? Um, in course, if you want to give a reason, you would just say given. Yeah, you would just say given, but you don't have to. Uh, well, if you want to be perfectly safe, just write given, but you shouldn't have to because it's it's literally given. It's the midpoint. Yeah. Okay, find me X, Y, and Z for this next question. And I want you to think carefully what shapes or ideas are involved and if you're feeling generous maybe you can give some tips in the chat to other students what what shapes or ideas do you see in this drawing that you can you can use and paul has said a cyclic quad and in paul i think it's slightly hidden but it's there pqrs People are going, why must be 90? Oh, there's, is there a tangent? I don't think there's a tangent, but it's a nice idea. The problem is this isn't a tangent because it doesn't touch it in only one place. But I would say that this is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. So there is my cyclic quad. And so this is my exterior angle. And I think or well, actually know that there's a relationship between this one and that one. So X must be 120. And the reason is exterior angle. Let me move this away. Cyclic quad. A lot of people are saying, why is 90? Why does Y have to be 90? Can you provide me some extra evidence? Ooh, Fateko has provided evidence. Um, Fateko has said, 
x is 90 because of angles in a semicircle and you're right this is the diameter so it's a semi it forms a semicircle and so a diameter will always subtend an angle of 90. so you can just say here angles in semi circle so this is 90 and then i can see that this one over here must be 60 because of angles on a straight line. So we can say QPS is 60 angles on a straight line, which means that Z must just be 180 minus 90 minus 60, which is 30. And that would be the sum of angles in a triangle. So this must be 50. And then earlier in the question, we decided that this was 120. So it's getting a little bit harder, um, but I think on the whole still, you know, within revision territory. Are there any questions or comments from anyone in the room? Okay, well, then I'm going to keep, um, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, that's a little bit easy. I think you all know, we'll know that one. Uh, find me X, Y, and Z for this one. And for those who are feeling generous, give us some tips in the chat about what you notice about this question. Tangent, yes. The key thing here is this thing has tan a tangent. And the tangent actually has a chord going from a point of tangency. In fact, and it, it actually works on both sides, right? So what is X? What is Y? What is Z? You don't have to do them in that order. You just need to find them so x is 45 because the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment and the reason is tan chord theorem and for the same reason here, this is going to be 60, and this is going to be tan chord theorem, because it's really just on the other side. What about the Z? What is the Z going to have to be? Well, because you know that X is 45, then Z is just going to be 180 minus 45 minus 60. So that's 75. And that is going to be sum of angles in a triangle. Yeah. So what you notice is that triangles and straight lines are always useful here. They can always be used in these types of questions. Okay, I like what I'm seeing in the chat. Everyone looks comfortable. And so I'm going to keep going. Let's do this one over here. In this question, you have to find me what Y and Z is. Now, everyone, I'm going quite quickly today. So if you feel lost, I really want you to encourage you to ask a question so that we can have a conversation. My Because I can't always see all of you online, I have to go on my general feel from the chat um, and so I encourage you, if you want to have a discussion, I really enjoy questions. Um, I know it's sometimes a bit of a sacrifice on your part, but you also help other people in the class. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, it's one of the lovely benefits of this model. Okay, Y and Z, let's go. What are they going to be? So Trishan has... Nompilo has 
given the value of y being 68, may I ask why? I'm having a bit of flashback to earlier in the lesson where we said that's the angle at the center and that is the angle at the circle. Oh, wait. No, that's that's for Z. <laughs> so what I should have done here, that gives you a hint for the other one. Hey? Looks like the bow tie or butterfly where we should have angles in the same segment. So Y is going to be 68. What is Z going to be? So this is another theorem that's very popular. It often gets asked about. And that's that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. And the relationship that I want to focus on is that Z is the angle at the center and it's being subtended from the arc or chord AB. And then it's in relationship with the 68 down here. So this must be two times 68, which is 136. Okay, uh, Linkara, I'm going to provide some, I'll provide some links to some notes in the next lesson, because I think that um, it may be helpful to have a base that you can recognize the shapes. Yeah, I also encourage you, Linkara, to have a look at the previous videos I've done, but I will see if I can, um, I don't have them like two seconds away right now, but I can provide you with some basic notes. Okay, uh, angle at center is twice angle at circumference is the reason that I'm going to give, which is 136. Thumbs up. That was a harder one. Thumbs up if you followed that. Thumbs down if you um, if I'm going too fast for you. Now, it really is about noticing the shapes. And you need to go at the pace that your brain will want. And depending on how much of this you've done, if your teacher did this in three hours, you're going to feel very confused. If your teacher did it in 10 hours, you're probably going to be less confused. If your teacher did it in 20 hours, you know, maybe then you have a bit more of a chance. So you need to adapt to what environment you're coming from. Um, okay. Let's do one more before the break, and then we're going to have a break. So for tips, please don't be afraid to give tips in the chat, because some students have only done a few hours on this. Um, what was helpful for this? What shape or idea is helpful for this question, for finding x, y, and z? Okay, tan chord theorem could be helpful. Well, I mean, I see a tangent and I see a chord. Well, actually, let's have a look. Well, it is helpful, yeah. Not tangents from the same point. There's only a tangent. The only tangent in this drawing is this one. That's the only tangent in the drawing. Ah, tan radius. Someone has mentioned the tan radius theorem, which I think is an important theorem because there's the radius and there's the tangent. Also, we have angles in a semicircle. So you can imagine that that diameter forms an angle over there. Now, these are all very useful tips to help us. How are we going to um, pull this together? Well, that's up to you guys for now. And then I will come and assist soon. Okay. Now, there's a couple of different ways we could do this. I do think that knowing what this angle is is helpful. And so I'm going to name it angle OTB, and I'm going to say it's 90 degrees. And the reason it's 90 is the tan radius theorem. 
So the tangent and the radius will always be at 90 degrees. Now, because I know that that's 90, that allows me to work out what X is. And what is that going to be? So 180 minus 90 minus 36 is 54. So this is going to be 54. But I still need to find what Y and Z is. Now I'm looking through the chat and I'm seeing that lots of people are saying that Y is 90. And I agree with you, Y is 90. And I think most of you have spotted that the green diameter subtends Y at the circumference. And so we'll just say angles in a semicircle. There is another way to do this. The other way to do it is to just say um, the angle at the center is, yeah, well, I mean, the other way to do it is the tan chord. So you could say that this one over here is 90. And so the chord over here subtends that angle. And so those are equal like that, but both are fine. And then the last one will be Z. Well, Z must be 180 minus the 90 minus the 30. The sum of angles in a triangle. And then Z would give me 60. Okay. So in this first half an hour, what have we tried to do? We've tried to jog our memory about circle geometry. What I'm seeing as the three major sections are we're dealing with circles in the center and the theorems that revolve around the center and radiuses and stuff like that. We have cyclic quads, so circles and cyclic quads, and then we also have circles and tangents. And so for me, I have those three boxes. Now, there are quite a few theorems, um, but th that's the main boxes that I'm playing with. Um, Kebane said, why is 90, why is, why 90? Okay, the green thing over here is a diameter. And the diameter, when it subtends, when it builds an angle at the circumference, it will always have an angle of 90. So that is what um, that reason is. The other way to do it is to say, look, this line over here is a tangent. And this line over here is um, a chord. And so the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle of the alternate segment. So the relationship can also be the windsurfer thing where with this one over here is equal to that one over there. So that's the other way you can do it. Okay, was that helpful, Kibane? Okay, great. Okay, enough maths for now. I want you on your feet and I want you to be with me as we jump around a little bit. And so just you know, turn on your cameras so we can see your lovely faces. And let's do some deep breathing just to unwind and we'll go from there. Okay, so let's start. One. Two, yeah, so I hope that got some oxygen into you. Let's start with a bit of just twisting, just to, you'll start off a bit stiff, and then as you relax, you'll notice your body gets looser, and you can turn more. So the idea is to just relax. And as you relax, your body naturally turns further. Look at that. I'm almost the whole way around already. Or at least halfway around. Right? Yeah. Then let's shake out our arms. Get them nice and loose. Shake out your legs. Get some blood flow moving through your body. Um, let's start with some small circles. So we're just making nice small circles and then we are doing some nice big circles. Pretend you're swimming the butterfly. Who knows how to swim a butterfly? Goodness gracious, that is a high level skill. 
Uh, I change direction. So now we're going, and then into smaller circles. Yeah. Then let's do tricep. Okay. Other tricep. And then shake it all out again. Legs as well. Okay, uh, we're going to do jumping jacks to get our heart rate up and get blood pumping around our body. Uh, we're going to do 20, and we're going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ah, oh. I hope that you got your body pumping. It definitely had an effect on me. <laughs> uh, cool. And then let's do a mass twenty-four puzzle before we head back to the circles for today. Cool. Solve them. See if you can make 24 using uh, those cards. Oh, I see that. Oh, thank you for taking for answering. How do you know the green line is a diameter? Um, yeah, because of the dot in the middle. And it, the line goes through that dot. And I think in the question, it might have even said the diameter, but I'll have to look. Okay, so Karabo has said, for the first one, eight plus nine plus seven, gets me to 24 and then times all that by one. So I use up that. And so Carabo, the glory is yours. Kapozzo, uh, I agree. And so you guys have it in the bag. Tati has said for the second one, now the problem Tati is, I wish this was a nine, but it's a six. It's a six. So no nines in the second one. Um, so, oh, three times six is 18 plus five plus one. Oh, okay. You're quite right. This is 24. Or, yeah, okay. So, dude, um, Zumbulu has also said that. So, that's fine. Uh, and Emmanuel has also said that. So, the blue is taken. The red is taken. Who can do the yellow? Ongukosi, seven times three plus six divided by two. So seven times three plus six divided by two, and that's three. Yep, that's 24. And then Kitsaw has also said two times seven gives me 14. Minus six gives me eight times three gives me 24. So that was actually a different way of doing the yellow one. Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. Okay. I hope you've had a nice break. Your body feels a bit looser. Your brain has forgotten about circles for a bit. And now we are going to keep swimming. So we've done that question already. Um, let us find, it's in this one, I want you to find G and I want you to find F. So F is down here and G is up here. See if you can solve, how do you find what that is? And what's maybe some tips in the chat? What is this funky thing going on? It looks like a Pac Man monster, like going like this. So, what is that situation called with A, B, and B, C?
Ah, Plumelo has said they're tangents from the same point. Yeah, it looks like a something trying to eat something else, you know? So you can see a tangent here, but that same tangent, so it, it's tangents from the same point and the points of tangency are here and here. Paul agrees, and I agree with you guys. So what do we know about A, B, and B, C? A, B equals B, C. And the reason is tangents from common point. Now, if this is equal to this, well, then this and this are going to be the same, but we still need to figure out what that F is. Okay, so what we can say is that you're right, F plus F, or yeah, plus 80 equals 180. Now, the reason I've actually used two reasons. The one reason is angles opposite equal sides because if like this one over here must also be if because it's opposite equal side. And then I've also used the reason um, sum of angles in a triangle. So I, I've added up all of these and they get to 180. So what is F going to be? Well, I've got two F. Um, equals 180 minus 80. So 2F is 100, which means that F must be 50. Okay, so this is 50 and this is 50. What is G going to be? What is G going to be? What's the reason for F? Um, so for Tekel, it's just angles opposite equal sides. So the angles opposite equal sides help us understand that this angle and this angle are the same. So that's why when F plus F plus 80 is 180, and I, I could say this because of two ideas. The one is the angles opposite equal sides. The other thing is that these three angles add up to 180. But now we're on to the slightly harder one here. Okay, this is a sneaky one. So this one over here is the center of the circle. Now, as a line from the center of the circle to the, to the um, tangent, is going to bring the tan radius theorem into play. So what I'm going to say is that OC is perpendicular to CB, and that is going to be the tan radius theorem. So we know this is 90. So we can say, now, once I know that, I actually then, the same idea could be true of uh, OA, is perpendicular to uh, AB. And it's the same reason, it's just the tan radius theorem. So this one over here also has to be 90. Now we know that this over here is 50. So what does G have to be? Because you know that's 90 and you know that's 50. Well, you would then say that G is 40. And you're really just using the tan radius theorem and what you've got already. So tan. Because you're saying, look, that's 90. The green one is 50. So what is the blue one? Well, together, the blue and the green have to give you, give you 90. So G would be 40. Give me a thumbs up if you, that we're getting harder. Give me a thumbs up if you followed that one. Give me a thumbs down if you if you didn't. Okay. Because today is all about just getting those memories back 
in your um, Zayan. Let's unmute Zayan and we can have a conversation. And while that's happening, I'm just going to move the next question onto the screen. Can you please try and find me um, I, H, and K? Zayan, can you hear me? Hi, sir. Can what? you hear me? Perfectly. Where can I help you? So I wanted to ask, when I was doing uh, D right there, sir, I said, yeah, no. I said F is equals to O. Tan code Okay, here's the problem. I don't know if okay, no, it's a it's a wonderful question. Let me show you what's happening. So in this question, you have say a tangent, which is going up to A. Now you write that there is a chord. Okay, so here's your angle, there's the tangent, here's the chord, and you want to make that connection. The problem is the tan chord theorem doesn't make its angle at the center. It makes the angle at the circumference. So the angle that would have been equal to the red dot is actually going to be down at the bottom. We don't, the angle at the center, uh, yeah, the use of that theorem wouldn't be correct in this case. Does that help a little bit? Can you see the difference? Like this one over here isn't related to that one over there. That doesn't work. You would have had to have this one go and make an angle appear somewhere to get another 50. Okay, I hope that helps, Zan. Okay, let's see if we can find what H, I, and K are going to be here. Pleasures there. I'm glad you asked your question because I think a lot of students would got caught by that. And so it's really important. We, I've, I see it every exam I mark, I see that problem come up. So I'm glad you pointed it out. Okay. Well, if that's 70, this is, and I saw, this is, this is going to have to be 70, which means that this must be 40. And I've used two reasons again here. I've used the fact that there are uh, angles opposite equal sides. And I've also used the reason sum of angles in a triangle. Then the last one, I need to know what I is. And then I think that this thing here is a tangent. There's a chord. And so this over here is equal to this over here. So what I'm going to say is that uh, angle BDC is equal to 70 tan chord theorem. And then from there, I can say that I is 180 minus 70 minus 70, which is 40. And that reason would be sum of angles in a triangle. Notice how each statement I make, I don't just make a statement without a justification. The justification is the reason. So I can say this angle is 70 because I'm using the relationship of the tan chord theorem. Uh, oh, you're right. Sorry, Flamino. I, I missed that. And it just shows you how there are different ways to do this. So you can absolutely use the, ta the tangents from a common point. This has to be equal to this because of that tangents from a common point theorem, which means this has to be 70 for that reason. Sorry, I lost it for a second there. So these would be equal because they're from a common point. And if that's equal to that, then this would have to be 70. 
And then from there, you know that that would be 14. Cool. Let's see if I can find you a slightly harder one. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're getting exciting. Okay. So we have a little bit, it's the last part of the lesson today. Let's see if I can find you some interesting ones. Find me X, W, and Z. Find me X, W, and Z. Oh, X, Y, W, and Z. I'm going to let you, I'm going to get some water while you work on this. What theorems do I see? Ooh, yeah, this is a sneaky one. I think I would probably start by identifying that there is a cyclic quad. And that could be helpful because I know properties of a cyclic quad that I can use to help me figure this out. Like I know 110 plus 48 plus w must equal 180 and that would be opposite angles cyclic quad and if i do the maths on that w has to be 22. Now, what about the other ones? So this is going to be interesting. So I need to probably work out uh, Z next. Who has some ideas about how I can get to Z? Or maybe I have to take a journey along the way to first... Co-interior. So Zayan, we don't have parallel lines, then we could have co-interior, but I'm am spotting something interesting. What is OU and OR? What is special about these two? What do you notice about those two? Yes, they are radii. And radii form these wonderful isosceles triangles so we could say um we could say uh o u r is equal to 22 degrees and that's going to be you could say radii or you could say um angles opposite equal sides now that in itself is not something but i was thinking we can probably work out what this is and I think that UOR is equal to 180 minus 22 minus 22, which is 136. And the reason was sum of angles in triangle. Now, there might be a quicker way. I'm not sure, but I'm just doing what I see in front of me. Now, if I know that this is 136, what is Z going to be? That is the question. Well, I think that Z is the angle at the circumference. So let's see if I can use a different color to help me. So here is the angle at the center. And I'm using the chord RU. But that same chord can make the angle at the circumference, in which case Z would be half of that. So 65, 68. And the reason would be angle at 
center equals twice angle at circumference. So this would be 68. All right, we are almost there. We need to find X and we need to find Y. And then we're going to call it a night for tonight. What is X going to be? Oh, Bungo Corsi, I think you've spotted something. Yes. Is X the X? Okay, here's the problem. I don't think X is the exterior angle because the it's a nice idea. You almost caught me too there. The exterior angle for this cyclic quad would have to be that whole big thing. So it's a nice idea, Bungo Corsi. You know, you, I almost went down that road myself, but I see that that's not the actual exterior angle. But what I do think is the tan chord theorem says here's a tangent, here's a chord. And so Z and X are in that relationship where the tan chord theorem says X is equal to 68 degrees tan chord theorem. And you can kind of see the tangent, the chord, and then the angle down here. Okay, last one. What is the Y going to be? What is the Y value going to be? We know this is 68. If only we could work out what that angle was. So I see these are tangents from a common point. And so we can say that P U R is 68. And that's going to be tangent from a common point. And then we know that Y must just be that, which is 60, it's 120. And then take away 16. What do we get for Y? So we're going to get 44, and that is going to be sum of angles in a triangle. All right, everyone, um, we've done quite a lot today. The main purpose um, was just to get the circle geometry things in your head again.